Sharp Harp on Sports, the bar with you. What do we have in store for you? But before we get to any of that, we have what Harp on Sports Twitter, Harp on Sports Instagram, of course, the Harp on Sports Facebook page. You can check out the website, harponsports.com, and don't forget about the YouTube channel as well, Harp on Sports for the bar, our bi weekly podcast in conjunction with the Harp on Sports Media and Audio Network. What do we have in store for you today? Dr. Fauci speaking once again, talking about a gloomy outlook for sports here as we progress with the rest of 2020. The NCAA coming full circle, going, I guess you see half circle, right? 180, they do a 180 on payers getting paid, at least receiving some sort of compensation or some sort of compensation. So we have that for you as well. And on top of that, just some realistic endeavors as we start to look forward to what the rest of the year holds. Let's start off first with the NCAA and, and their athletes and the payment of athletes and all of these things. Basically, we are where we were months ago when the discussion was taking place whether or not student athletes should be able to make money off their likeness. Been talking about this for years. How far back? I can remember going back to my time, ready for this, in Alabama talking about Tim Tebow a decade. This is a decade later that we're talking about this. What was the discussion? The discussion was, why shouldn't Tim Tebow be allowed to go to the mall in Gainesville and sign autographs and make money for it? Why can't he? It's his image. It's his likeness. That's why we lost EA Sports College football. That's why we lost quite a few things when it came to athletes. It's one thing for them to get a scholarship and to play sports, but when you can profit off their likeness after they've graduated, it becomes a little bit of an issue, right? They own themselves, and they should be able to make some money off of it. Now, what's happened over time is the whole concept of they get a, look, they get an education, they get an education. You're right, they do. But they used to play 11 games. Actually, they used to play 10 games. In the 80s, they started playing 11 games a year. And then in the late 90s, early 2000s, they started playing 12 games a year. And then you got a conference championship game that's 13 games a year. And then you had your Selfs College Football Playoff 14, 15 games a year. So you went from 30 years ago, 10 games to 15. That's a big jump. That's a big jump. Well, they still received their education. What else did they get? The Sugar Bowl Rose Bowl payout in the mid 90s was two, three million dollars. Now it's almost 17. Coaches' salaries went up. Everybody made more money. Education went up in terms of cost. But come on. This was nothing more than just taking advantage of a situation and using the guise of amateur athletics to get away with it. Well, fast forward, the concept comes out. Well, wait a second. It, you could just let them make their own money. Let them make their own money. Let them do what they have to do to make their own money. The marketplace will dictate the value of such. Well, it's not going to be fair to the tennis players and the men's volleyball players. You're right, it's not. And it's never going to be universally fair. They can still make their money. They can. They can still make their money. Now, they're going to have to be more creative. Of course, the concept is going to be there for what? The concept is going to be there for football and basketball and maybe in some markets, depending on that market, maybe hockey in Michigan and Ohio and Minnesota, maybe college baseball in Baton Rouge in certain pockets of the country, maybe. But the emphasis, college basketball, UConn, the women there may be able to make some money. But this is primarily going to be football and basketball. So the rich are going to get richer. But I remind you, that those two programs, predominantly at schools, are the two that turn a profit. The rest don't. So, again, if Kyle Trask, Gators quarterback, wants to go sign autographs on a Saturday at the mall and make money, let him. Who's he hurting? Owns his likeness. So that's what this means. And the NCAA didn't have a choice. They didn't have a choice in this matter. Now there is, to me, an ulterior motive with this. Of course there is. There's an ulterior motive to this, but in watching this unfold, the NCAA doesn't have a choice anymore. Okay, and they've asked Congress to help them out with this. Like, we need this regulated. We need this regulated. We need you to regulate it and make it uniform across all 50 states. Why? Could you imagine if one slow-moving state, like Mississippi, decides, well, we're not going to do this. We're going to, no, 
no, we're not going to do this. And you have schools in California that do, in schools in Michigan that do, and let's say Tennessee doesn't, Florida does, Georgia doesn't, then all of a sudden I can outflank you for scholarships left and right. Got to be universal. I agree with the NCAA on that. They're right. They don't want to deal with that mess. They hope this may curb some booster action as well. And I'd be all for if the NCAA came out and said, okay, now your athletes can make money. You own your likeness. It belongs to you. We catch boosters and we catch money filtering into your program. We are going to hammer you. And I'm fine with that now because the marketplace is open. It is. There are a couple of rules when it comes to this. The students or the student athletes, if you will, football players, basketball players can mention the school. They can mention the team. They can mention the campus. They can't use logos. So again, pick Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. He can come out this year and chocolate milk, Gatorade, whatever he wants to do. I'm Trevor Lawrence for so-and-so. I'm Trevor Lawrence for Tide Pods. You can do that, right? I'm Trevor Lawrence for Head and Shoulder Shampoo. Playing football at Clemson has taught me a couple of things. Practice is tough, and I use head and shoulders to clean my hair. Whatever. He can mention Clemson. He can't throw the Clemson logo up there. He can't throw the ACC logo up there. Things of that nature. He can't wear a Clemson football jersey while doing the ad. Things like that. That's how they're going to separate the two, or at least attempt to separate the two. To me, it's a move in the right direction. What does this hurt? Going to ruin amateur athletics? How? It's the same thing that when NFL teams during the preseason, NBA teams started to put logos, advertising logos on jerseys. Oh, it's going to ruin the game. How? How's it going to ruin the game? People said the same thing when they put names on the back of jerseys. It's not going to ruin anything. And the way I look at it, anything that can be done where the money doesn't come out of the consumer's pocket, your pocket, you should be all for it. What do you mean they're going to get $5 million for this? Good. They don't have to ask money for me. Or they're going to get a donation for this? Good. That means no money for me. Smart business. It's a smart business. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. So there we go with that. The NCAA coming 180. And again, I mentioned there's an ulterior motive to this. There is. I'll be in a small one. I'll be in a small one, but there is an ulterior motive to this. Why? When the fall rolls around and maybe we can play college football without students. Remember a couple weeks ago, school presidents, university presidents, um, college football playoff committee came out and said, look, we, we're not going to have football games without students in class. The reason why? You couldn't make the football team come and practice. No students are going to go, they're still student athletes. No, at that point they wouldn't. You're using them for a profit. Couldn't do it. Now you may be able to dance around that a bit. How may you be able to dance around that a bit? Get ready, especially at your big institutions. What do you know? Insert car dealership here is going to have an autograph session. Now, social distancing will be respected. But come on out, sign autographs. Each of these young men can make some money. And now they've got money. They're on campus. They're happy. No stink is being raised. They're playing. All's good. And we can look in the other direction. Oh, huh. that's exactly what the point of that is. So good for the NCAA to come full circle on this. Progress always finds a way. And something tells me if Trevor Lawrence or Kyle Trask or insert any Justin Fields at Ohio State, if those guys are signing autographs on Sundays in the mall at 15 bucks a piece, that's not going to ruin the game of college football. Don't think so. So good for them on that front. One of the other things that came out today, Dr. Fauci reiterating that, you know, sports going to look a little bit different for a while. Now he said, there's a plan. He said this last week, and this is where things get convoluted and twisted. If I've learned anything in the last seven to 10 days with this, now that the data and the projections are lining up to where we thought they were and death tolls hit 50,000, 60,000, 70,000. You're getting a flipping of the narrative and the rhetoric like, well, things are changing. Yeah, because people are dying more. They're going to change. It, it's amazing that Americans need 100,000 people to die to go, I guess this is serious. I guess it is worse than the flu. Oh, I guess it's worse. 
Oh, nobody saw this coming. Let's try. Smart people did. They've been talking about it for months. You just don't listen. When it comes to this, Dr. Fauci said, there's a way to have sports in the fall. There is. You have no fans and you sequester the players in hotels. He came out today or in the last 24 hours and say, you know what, we may want to put sports on the back burner for the rest of the year. The sports that you want, maybe it's the best thing to shut it down for a year. Now, can you differentiate between the two? Because I can. Here's the reality of all this. And we talked about this a week ago, maybe even two weeks ago now. And it's the reality of the situation. Sports as you remember it will not be back for a year. Sports as you remember it two, three months ago aren't coming back for at least a year. Not the way you remember it. Not the way. Look at it like this. Even I am guilty of this. Oh, my belt. I weigh about 20 more pounds than I did two years ago. Some muscle, some not. In order for me to get my body back the way it was when I was 19, it's going to take a couple of months. It's going to take me four to six months to get back to where I'm never going to be, you know, no gray hair, a build out. I'm never going to look like I did when I was 19. I'm not. Wrinkles. It's going to happen. Right? You're never, you can get close, but you're never going to be back to what you were. You're never going to have the metabolism when you're 19. You can work out and get as great shape as you want. I go out and I throw a couple of soda pops back. I used to be able to get up the next morning and go work out in college, go run, go do things. Now I go out, I have a wedding reception, I have a good time, or it's Uber home, taxi home. Guess what? I can't do anything the next day. You're just not the way you used to be. You're just not the way you used to be. You're not, and that's okay. But that's the reality of this. I can't wait for sports to come back. Do you really think it's going to be like opening up the turnstile at Disneyland and everybody's going to flood in? Reality check. That isn't going to happen. That's not going to happen. Sports that you remember just a couple of months ago aren't coming back. Not that way. They're going to look totally different. You want college football this fall? It's going to look like a Mac football game in November. That's the reality. Now, you can spin it you want. Go ahead and knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. I've been here from the beginning telling you this is not going to work or this is going to work this way or this is going to work in that matter. I'm here to tell you, if you think you're going to have jam-packed fans in the stands in September and October, you're high as a kite. You're not, you're not realistic. You're not. You're not based in reality. You're going to have to change your expectations. I have. I've resigned myself to the fact of this. I have. It's my job, it's my livelihood, my career doing these things. I can sit here and tell you safely, without a doubt, when Dr. Fauci says we may just need to suspend sports for the rest of the year, oh my gosh, we can't do that, we have to have sports back. We, if you want it to look like it looked, guess what? You're not gonna get that in September, you're not. You're not. Socially distanced stadium, they're gonna try things. When I see the Premier League and Major League Baseballs throwing around some ideas, the one thing the NFL and college football have going for it is they can sit around because they're not in a rush yet. Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, they're in a rush. They're in a rush. And if they're targeting the end of June of trying this out, okay, we've got a plan to get back in place. What's that plan going to be? I'm here to tell you, your realistic expectations of this need to change. It's not going to be what you thought. Look at sports this fall, like you now. In the realistic nature, if you want to work out and get in great shape, what you would look like in a month, look like in two months. You want to look like you did when you were 19, physically, is it even possible? B, it would take a year. It would take a year. That's where we are with this. You can wish, go ahead. Go ahead. Hope and, uh, hope and optimism are a beautiful thing, but not at the risk of delusion. You're just not going to get it back that way. You're not. So, again, you can feed yourself that pipe dream if you want to. I'm here to tell you, you got those options. This or that. I can have football and baseball. It did not be anything of a fan experience, but I get it back, or I can wait and get it closer to what I remember. 
I think the earliest you're going to see a jam-packed stadium in sports, the earliest, December. The earliest. Mark this down. See if I'm wrong. I told you back when this hit in April, or actually in March, that you weren't going to have anything till the 4th of July. How close am I? Go back and look at these podcasts. Go back and watch these videos. I think right around St. Patrick's Day, maybe before that, I came out and said, the earliest you're going to get sports is the 4th of July. Oh, you're crazy. We're going to open things up by Easter weekend. How close are we? Hmm? See, the Coca-Cola 600 came out and said, we're still planning on racing the weekend. Dur during the weekend of the 4th of July. Okay. There you go. It's the earliest. And that's with no fans. That's with no fans. So realistic expectations as we go forward with this. Uh, I did see the Big 12 commissioner come out with an idea. This just can't work. This is where you try to get too cute and give people what they want, but don't go all in. You know, you kind of do what you want, but you don't go all in. It's the kind of person that gets dressed at the gym and their, you know, their sneakers, their shoes match the shorts, shorts match the shirt, and they get headband on, bandana, and they get on the treadmill and walk. They go over to the weight section and go, Get in there and bust it. Why go through all that? Why go through all that effort to drive there, get drive, all that stuff, and then not sweat? If you're gonna do it, do it. If you're gonna do it, do it. Once you start, you can't stop. You can't stop. This is a you know rolling down the hill syndrome. Once you decide, you know what, we gotta descend. I'm gonna land this airplane. Yeah, you can't and get back up. You gotta go down. It's like U five seven one. Spoiler alert at the end. When the submarine's coming up, we can't stop it from ascending. That's where you are. Once you start, you're not going to stop it. So when the Big 12 commissioner came out and said, we'll play four or five games in October, September, October, and then we can take off while flu season gets bad, November, December, January, and come back in February and finish the season. Yeah, okay. The first round of the draft, when, when you take a step back and look at it, 63 picks, almost two full rounds of picks were from the SEC. Another full round of picks were from the Big Ten. How many of those, three of the seven rounds in this draft were essentially SEC or Big Ten football players? If you play six games or five games in September and October and come back in February and March, and I look around the corner and I see the NFL draft a month away, why on earth am I going to play those final five games? If I'm Trevor Lawrence and I played five or six games September and October, and then you trot me back out there, you're going to bring me back out there when? March? February? If I'm the number one pick or I'm a top ten pick and I'm a stud and I know I'm going to go in the top five, why on earth am I going to come out and play four more games? Why? You think people skipping bowl games now has gotten out of hand. Split the college football season between September and October and February and March. See what happens then. Why on earth? Why on earth? You know, December, January, why on earth would I come back and play with my teammate? That, that's, again, I appreciate the idea and it's like a brainstorming session where you're throwing a bunch of ideas out there and you're trying to come up with a plan. That one not going to work. It's just not going to work. It doesn't make any sense. Why on earth would you come back and, oh, loyalty to the team. Yeah. Uh-huh. Again, three rounds. Big Ten. SEC. What, you, what you'd have is the team that you would see in September and October would not be the same team you see in February and March. And again, a whole season, I get it. You s s split it six and six. Okay, what if I go two and four? Or let's go let's say I go four and two the first six games. And I come back and I'm a well-oiled machine and I win six in a row and I'm dicing teams by 30 points. You're going to put me in the playoff? I'm a totally different team than I was three months ago. You're add to the drama. I love drama, but you're, you're not getting the real version of it. Again, it goes back to what we talked about. Do you want this to be anything similar or close to what you have had? If the answer is yes, you're going to have to wait. You're not going to get it. You're just not. You're not. So, got to be realistic about this. If you don't care, well then look, you can play them in empty stadiums. And Dr. Fauci said, hey look, you can play baseball, you bet you can, with no fans and the players quarantine in hotels. Sounds like a good life, doesn't it?
You may not care, but there are people. Those are human beings. And let's not forget, you may not care, although they make a ton of money. Secretaries teams don't. Guess who else doesn't make a lot of money? Not a ton. People in the front office don't. What about the Bat Boys? You know, you may not care about that. Take a step back and think about that as we dissect this. So, there you go. I know. Here we are in the middle of the week. May's right around the corner. What, May's 48 hours away? And we're sitting here, we're looking around going, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Big news of the day is the NCAA 180. Because I think that creates a pathway to get players back on campus in the fall without students being in class. I do. Also, again, <laughs> What Dr. Fauci said, you're never going to have that 19-year-old body. You're never going to have that 19-year-old hairline. You're never going to be able to drink like you were when you were in college. You're not. That's what this football season is. When you look back to what you had, you're not going to get it this year. You're not. It's not going to be what it was, not for at least a year. If you wanted to have that body that you had when you were a senior in high school, probably going to take you a year to get there right now. Probably going to take you a year to get there. How do you get there? Time, time, time. Work, work, work. That's how you're going to get back to what football and everything was. It's not realistic. So there you go. Those are our big things today. Again, Harp on Sports, the bar, live from my office here on the campus of the University of Florida and in the spatial studios of ESPN 98.1 FM, 8.50 AM, WRUF. You want to consume the podcast? Several ways to do it. This is the Facebook Live version. We'll get the podcast loaded later tonight. Uh, harponsports.com. You can follow us on Twitter at harponsports, Instagram at harponsports, the Harpon Sports YouTube channel. Like, follow, share, share, follow, like. Appreciate your time as always. Enjoy your midweek. We'll be back this weekend with another edition of The Bar right here on the Harpon Sports Audio and Media Network.